I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. At today's Senate Judiciary Committee hearing, Senator John Corning grilled FBI Director Christopher Wray about illegal drugs coming across the southern border. Corning raised concern about criminal street gangs being responsible for a large portion of gun violence in the country. The Texas senator asked if there is a nexus between drugs, gangs, and guns, to which the FBI director said that is correct. Mr. Feinstein, our friend and colleague Senator Cornyn is recovering from COVID. We wish him well, and he's going to join us virtually now in questioning uh, the director. Senator Cornyn, are you with us? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me all right? We can hear you. Yes, Senator. Good morning, Director Ray. Um, Senator Grassley talked about the unprecedented amount of illegal drugs that are coming across the border that contributed to the overdose deaths of 108,000 Americans last year alone. I want to ask you, um, you alluded to the FBI task forces that, that deal with crime in communities all across the country. Are criminal street gangs the primary distribution network for those illegal drugs that come across the border? Uh, that's certainly, I, I, I think anecdotally, I don't know that I have the intelligence assessment in front of me, but I think we would say that criminal street gangs are the, the vehicle that we interact with the most as distribution uh, mechanisms for uh, drugs that are coming from the cartels and transnational criminal organizations south of the border. And these uh, criminal street gangs, uh, I think you alluded to this, are responsible for a significant portion of the violence, including gun violence in communities across our country as they battle for market share and territory, correct? Absolutely right. Uh, when I'm out talking with chiefs and sheriffs, you know, and talking to them just about every week, uh, I find more and more that that's what we're seeing. There certainly are national gangs that we're concerned about, but I think uh, Americans might be surprised to hear how many essentially neighborhood gangs, to use the terminology that a lot of chiefs and sheriffs would use, uh, are uh, in many ways the, the biggest driver uh, of violence in, in a lot of our communities. And uh, of course they deal in all sorts of uh, illicit activities, but uh, the profits from the distribution of these drugs a significant portion of how they um, make money? Yes, very much so. And um, when you talk about the rise in violent crime being one of your uh, most urgent concerns, I think the, the country certainly would agree with you that statistics tell the tale of the significant spike in crime. And of course, along with it, the public concern for that. Um, would, you, would you attribute um, some of the, the violence, increased violence that you're seeing um, to these gangs, to their drug business. I'm trying to figure out if you will agree with me that there is a nexus between drugs, gangs, and guns. Is that, um, is that correct? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I, one of the first things I'm asking about in all these field office visits, both to our own people and to our law enforcement partners when we sit privately and have listening uh, sessions where I'm really asking them questions. Uh, that's what you just said is something I hear about over and over and over again. Well, I know there's been a lot more attention focused on the border in terms of the flow of migrants across the 3 million encounters the Border Patrol has had. But one of the tactics it looks like that the cartels are using is to overwhelm the Border Patrol and other U.S. law enforcement agencies so they can then move uh, their drug, uh, the drugs across the border. Um, we know how many people were encountered, roughly 3 million, but the Border Patrol estimates that there could be as many as 300,000 uh, so-called getaways. These are people who obviously weren't seeking asylum and weren't turning themselves in uh, to uh, engage in that process. Um, when Director Mayorkas was asked about the border, um, he made the, frankly, from my standpoint, implausible statement that the border was secure. Uh, from your, from your vantage point, in your opinion, is the border secure? Uh, well, boy, I, I, um, 
I guess I'm hesitant to substitute my judgment for the Secretary of Homeland Security, but I will tell you that I have uh, spent a lot of time with our field offices down that have border responsibility. Uh, I have been to uh, uh, ports of entry, uh, including not that long ago, uh, with CBP officers walking me through it uh, so I could really see firsthand what they're up against. And all I can say is, um, Boy, they got a, a heck of a challenge, um, and I admire their grit and their determination uh, to get the job done because it's it's a daunting one. Director Ray, I've always thought of you as a straight shooter, but you won't answer that question. Well, look, I, I think uh, the border presents significant uh, security issues. There's a wide array of criminal threats that we encounter uh, down at the border. Uh, we, you mentioned a little bit in some of your questions, the transnational criminal organizations that use diverse and complex methods to traffic drugs. Uh, that then cascades over into prison and street gangs uh, who distribute it. Uh, we are trying to tackle it uh, on our end in support of our partners, both DHS but also state and local partners, uh, not just on our side of the border through the task forces that I mentioned, but also on the other side of the border. We have uh, a, what I think our biggest LEGAD office is in Mexico City. Uh, we have uh, transnational uh, uh, anti-gang task forces uh, that we work with the, our local partners in, in the Northern Triangle. Um, but it, it, you know, it is a major, major challenge uh, and it is, represents significant uh, concerns for us. In my most recent uh, trip to the border, uh, Senator Cruz and I uh, took a number of our uh, Republican conference down to the border, many of whom had made that trip before. Uh, but we continue to hear the same sort of message from the Border Patrol in terms of the nationalities of the pe people they encounter there. And my recollection is in one sector, the Del Rio sector, they reported encounters uh, from people from 150 plus countries. Um, in other words, it's not just a, a south of the border issue in terms of Mexico, Central America and the like. This is an international uh, human smuggling network. Would you agree with me? Uh, I, I don't have the numbers like it sounds like you do, but I certainly know that it is a, a an eclectic mix of nationalities uh, and the volume is just staggering. And that's a public security threat. You agree with me? Uh, uh, to me, it represents a significant uh, security issue and represents a wide array of criminal threats that flow out of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Cornyn. Get well. Senator Whitehouse. 